My name is Mira Kim. I'm the executive director of Red Cedar Chamber Music. I serve both as an administrator and as one of the core musicians. I'm a violinist. And uh, I'm hailing from Iowa City, Iowa, my home in Iowa City, Iowa. But our organization serves all of Eastern Iowa. I've been playing violin since I was seven years old. And I am still friends with my teacher who started me on the instrument. And she, in fact, taught my son for a while as well until she finally retired. You know, we were in a bit of a state of shock, of course, when things shut down. We had an entire spring schedule with performances um, through March, April, May. <laughs> and suddenly, March 13th, we gave our final performance and we decided it wasn't safe to continue. And so we've had to reschedule and replan future seasons. And of course we plan ahead by two or three years. So everything changed. And then it was a question of what can we do to continue to reach our audiences? We've, we've, our organization's been in Eastern Iowa for 24 years. Um, my husband, who's the artistic director and the cellist um, and I have been directors for, this is now our fifth season. So um, we've got a few years under our belt, but the organization is well known in this area. And, you know, we go into the nooks and crannies of our community. So we take the music to libraries. We take the music to senior living communities. We take the music to um, school classrooms and do extended residencies, not just, you know, a one, one concert in the gymnasium sort of thing. So obviously, you know, all of that got put on hold. Um, and we're, you know, sitting around our house quarantining, and we happen to have two teenage sons who are accomplished musicians. Um, and we decided, well, let's use our sons, they can be emerging artists, they're obviously not professionals quite yet. And let's put together some programs where we live stream from our home, we had the unique luxury of having four musicians quarantining together so that we could make music in real time rather than doing layered recordings. Um, and obviously four of us together was at that time in April, a real novelty. Um, now I know some groups are starting to come together and distance and mask and, and all of that. So we just had a great time reaching our audiences in a way that they actually felt that they got to know us better because it was a family endeavor. Um, and, you know, obviously there were a few challenges for people in terms of the technology, but often they could find a family member or a close friend who was willing to walk them through it or help them to get to our links. You know, we were streaming live on YouTube and uh, we've offered those performances for free and they stay up and people can still access them if they want. We got amazing feedback from people either via like Facebook, text messages, emails, cards even, saying that, you know, in these troubling times, it was so comforting to see, you know, something that they're familiar with and to hear the great music. Um, and also just that, um, you know, that it was like their happy place. Like they would rewatch videos just because it was a warm, inviting atmosphere. Um, so we did that. We actually did 11 live stream concerts um, with three distinct, distinct concert programs. And then we took a little break in July and August. And now our fall season has started again, of course, many things up in the air. We gave uh, an outdoor performance, distanced, masked, all of that um, last weekend. And we were supposed to give a second one, but of course, weather, <laughs> these events are weather contingent. We obviously gained the technology and the skills to do these live stream performances. So we realized after we reached people that used to live in the area but moved out of town, or even I have relatives in Korea who were able to tune in, that it's important to continue doing live streams regardless of our ability to perform in person. So we launched a new series called Hearth and Home, and we will do that for all of our concert programs this coming season. 
Um, and then, of course, we will look for opportunities to perform in person or, you know, keep our finger on the pulse of when we think that is safe or in which venues or in what capacity, because every venue is a little different depending on the size and 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 not all of our concerts will include our sons. We're going to do uh, one where we're just a duo, violin, cello duo, and then you know, our hope is to have guest artists with us in the spring, but that does remain in the air. And we have, you know, plan B's and plan C's, <laughs> depending. One of our guest artists is a flutist, which is, you know, a high aerosol producing instrument. So it could be, we could have a different guest artist who could be masked or, you know, in, in order for us to be in the same space together to rehearse and, and maybe do a live stream or even perform, so.